In this video, we're going to go ahead and cover section 6.5, the complex plane. And this is still part of unit six, additional topics in trigonometry. So this is actually one of my favorite topics because it's the complex numbers. And the complex numbers are just, they're just so different, I guess you could say. Um, if you recall from our semester last year, we did talk about them a little bit. Um, we talked about how there is a real part. So this is if this was our complex number, for instance, A would be the real part, and then B I represents the imaginary part. And I did mention briefly that there's actually like a whole other dimension, right, where these numbers exist. And that is the complex plane. So the complex plane is like the following. You have your real axis. So these are the numbers that we that we are used to, the real numbers. And then we have the imaginary axis, which is actually the vertical um, axis here. And together, these two make the complex plane. So you could kind of say that the real numbers and the imaginary numbers are subsets of the complex numbers, okay? Um, think of this as your x and as your y. So we plot them the same way. If you had, for example, three plus four i, well then your real part would be three. Okay, so you'll notice that on the real axis, which we associate with the x-axis usually, you have a three here. And then on the imaginary axis, which we usually associate with the y, we have our four. So one, two, three, four. And this point three, four represents three plus four i, okay? Um, same thing with the point I have down here, we have negative two, negative one. So if you wanted to think of that in terms of a complex number, you would write it as negative two and then minus i because one is the same as this uh, negative i right here, okay? Because again, that is the imaginary axis. So the second coordinate corresponds to our imaginary axis, okay? All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and do some examples with these because they are just so much fun. Um, we have the definition of the absolute value of the complex number. So what we're going to do for the next examples is kind of like some operations with these numbers, okay? We have um, that the, the this absolute value of the complex number is z is equal to, if z is equal to, I'm sorry, a plus bi, then we're going to have the absolute value of this is basically just like, um, kind of like what we did with the magnitude, right? Square root of a squared plus b squared look familiar. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. We're going to go ahead and plot this point and we're going to calculate the absolute value of it. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly here. First of all, I should probably draw my axis. Let's see, three and negative four. So we're going to be going into one of the bottom quadrants here. Remember that this, so this is the same, three minus four i, we can associate it with three comma negative four. If you're thinking about our real axis, so the reals, and the imaginary axis right here, okay? So on the real axis, we have one, two, three, and on the imaginary, we have negative four, one, two, three, four. So here is my point at three, negative four, or you can write it, you know, this way. So three minus four i, and that's it for the graph. Okay, we plotted it on the complex plane. Um, let's go ahead and find the absolute value. So the absolute value is defined as the absolute value of three minus four i is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, our a is equal to three, that's the real part, and b is gonna be negative four, that's the imaginary part. So we're gonna have three squared plus negative four squared, which is just equal to the square root of three squared is nine, negative four squared is 16. And that's gonna give us nine plus 16 is 25. So the magnitude is just equal to five. I'm sorry, not the magnitude, what am I saying? The absolute value, I'm sorry, the absolute value. Let's write that, the absolute value is equal to five. That's it, that's it for that first one. Let's move on to the next example. We have example number two. Okay, so this one actually worked out for us because they're, they're pretty simple um, and I didn't want to spend too, too much time. So let me go ahead and just pretend you did not see this. Okay, we have find 
1 plus 3i plus 2 plus i in the complex plane. So we're going to be adding complex numbers in this one. And you'll notice in the solution, I'm going to kind of, well, let me, let me just cover the graph. We'll look at this part. In the solution, what I did is I highlighted my imaginary numbers. So 3i and i is lightly highlighted there. It's kind of hard to see because of the blue that I have here. But basically, we combine the real parts. So 1 plus 2 go here. OK, and then we combine the imaginary parts. Let me focus this a bit. It keeps going in and out of focus today for some reason. All right, so 1 plus 2 is 3. 3i three plus 1i is 4i. And this would be our answer, where 3 is the real and 4i is the imaginary. So if you wanted to think of this as a point on the a complex plane, it would be 3, 4 in the complex plane. Okay, So that's kind of what I'm going to show you here. And I'm also going to show you the vector addition. Okay, we have our original one, 1 plus 3i, which is this one. Okay, so 1 plus 3i means 1 on the real and then 3 on the imaginary. So that's this first vector. Okay, and then we have the second vector, 2 plus i. So that means 2 on the real and 1 up on the imaginary. So these are the two vectors we're talking about. Um, when we're adding vectors, what you're actually doing is you're kind of continuing the vector. So I basically just kind of picked this up and moved it up. So you'll notice that I kind of have it dashed right here, 2 plus i. And if you connect these, you will have, let's see if my pen decides to work. If you connect this combination here, you will notice that they land on the point 3, 4, which is exactly what we got over here. Or if you want to write it, you know, in the other format, we have 3 plus 4i. Write it as a complex number. I'm sorry, an imaginary number is what I meant to say. So there it is. Okay. And this, again, this right here represents the addition. If this was, for example, if this was u and this was v, this would be like saying u plus v. Okay. All right, let's look at the second example. The second one I have here is a subtraction problem. And this also worked out for us just to kind of speed up the time a little bit here. We have find 2 minus 4i minus 1 plus i in the complex plane. So same deal. We're just going to subtract it like we would normal numbers. And we combined our real parts and the imaginary parts. So you'll notice we have our, let me highlight this, 4i and i. Um, 2 minus 1 go in the first parentheses, and then we have negative 4i in the second one, and then minus i in this one. So what I did here, um, just to kind of avoid any kind of uh, confusion, I kind of distributed the negative, and I did that over here. So like if I put this minus right here, I get negative 1, and then minus here, I get minus i. And then I turned this to addition, just to show that we're still kind of sort of adding, um, it's like saying plus negative, okay? So the two real parts, 2 minus 1, are 1. The imaginary parts, negative 4i and minus i, give me negative 5i. So you'll see that plus minus I was talking about, which just gives us 1 minus 5i. So this is my, this negative 5i is my imaginary part, and 1 is my real. Let's look at the graph real quickly. These are a little bit more confusing because you're subtracting. But basically, if you can get to this point, you are totally fine. Okay, so we'll notice that 2 minus 4i is this one, so 2 and then negative 4. So this is the first vector. And then 1 plus i is up here. But since we're subtracting it, you kind of have to think of it like the other way. So I just kind of moved it here. I moved it here also to see if that would work, but it didn't. My vector was over here, so that, that didn't work out so well. But if you were if you move it over this way, you, you'll notice that this distance, and it's if it was drawn perfectly, so this distance right here and this distance right here are the same. And that represents our subtraction of u minus v if we had you know u and v labeled. And our answer, 1 minus 5i, is exactly that. So here's the 1, and then here is the negative 5. So this right here represents 1 minus 5i. And again, if you're not too crazy about this graph, don't, don't worry about it. If you can do this, you're perfectly fine. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next example. Nice quick video here. Um, we have example number four. Plot z equals 2 minus 3i and its complex conjugates. Okay, in the complex plane, 
write the conjugate as a complex number. Okay, so we have this complex number, and I said imaginary earlier, but it's it's a complex number because it's made up of a real and an imaginary. Um, and we're just gonna we're gonna plot it first. So let's do that first. We have I like to write rewrite this just because it kind of gives me peace of mind. So this is the same as two negative three, where instead of x and y, we're using imaginary and real. So let's do that first. We have our real axis and then we have the imaginary axis. And if you wanted to use notations, by the way, instead of having to write this, you could do um, the reals and then I for imaginary, okay? So two and negative three. So one, two, one, two, three. So there is my first point that I have. This is two minus three i, also known as two three, I'm sorry, two negative three, okay? And we are gonna plot the complex conjugate. So if you remember, the conjugate is basically just taking this number, the, the, the imaginary number and flipping the sign. So if I wanted to find the conjugates, okay, conjugate, complex conjugate, Okay, of uh, this one, it would be, I guess I'll call it z prime is equal to two plus three i. So we just change the sign, yeah? Which means that instead of being on this side, it's gonna be on the opposite side at positive three. So one, two, three, there it is. And this would be two plus three i or two comma three. And believe it or not, that that's it for this one. Pretty simple, I hope, okay? Um, let's go ahead and oh, and it says write the write the conjugate. So we, we did that right here. There it is. Okay, um, or you know, in coordinate form if you want. I do have a note down here. It's kind of low because I thought this would take more room. But the note says that a plus b i and a minus b i are complex conjugates, which we should know. Okay, so the imaginary part is what gets reflected across the real axis. So think of it like. Um, when you're flip, when you're well, when you're reflecting over the x-axis, basically, but in this case, it's over the real axis because that's that's what the x-axis represents in the complex plane. So you have this a b becomes a negative b, and we did see that right here when we did this example. Okay, so geometrically or graphically, all that happens is it's just a flip over the horizontal axis. Okay, let's look at the last question. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, not the last question. Second to last question, we have two more but I promise you they're, they're pretty simple. We have something with distance and something with midpoint. Um, let's look at the formula. The distance formula in the complex plane. So the distance D between the points A, B, and S, T, just, these are just random variables, okay? In the complex plane is the following. Uh, D is equal to the square root of the difference squared plus the difference squared of corresponding uh, numbers, okay? so. You're gonna have this one, the the imagine, I'm sorry, real minus the real, imaginary minus the imaginary. So they just, you know, they match up with each other. And it's real similar to what you've already done with distance formula. So let's go ahead and find the distance for this example here. So let's find the distance between five minus four i and six plus five i in the complex plane. I'm going to let s equal to, let me see, which one's gonna be farther? So that's gonna be five, negative four, six. So I'm gonna let S equal to this one. And it doesn't really matter. You can let it equal to whichever one, as long as when you're plugging stuff in, you're consistent with, you know, if you put this one to be S, then this, the six first and the five I has to go first also over here. That, that's, all it, that's all that you have to worry about. And uh, what did they use? Um, T, I guess. Is that how I want to do this? Um, oh, actually, I don't want to do S. Let's do, um, I guess, S comma T is what I should have put. Okay, so S and T are going to be this one. And this one's going to be A and B. So A and B are going to be the other one. Um, 5 minus 4i. Okay, so no big deal. We're just going to plug all this stuff in. So distance is equal to the square root uh, we're going to start with our S. So S in this case would be the 6, and then T would be the 5, okay? So 6 minus 
this one, this would be, the five would be A and the negative four would be B. Right? So six minus five squared plus, now the imaginaries, so five, okay, minus negative four squared, okay? And we're just gonna work this out. So let's go ahead and do that. D equals square root, six minus five is just one squared. Five plus four is going to give us nine, right? So we have nine squared. And we're just gonna be basically adding this. So that's gonna give us the square root of one plus 81, which is the square root of 82, which is some decimal, probably nine point something. Let's do that real quickly. Oh, I cannot find, oh, here we go. Hopefully I don't have to edit this too much. 82 square root, I have 9.06. So the distance is about 9.06 for this one, units, I guess, since we didn't really have a, a, measure, a measure for the units. And yeah, that's that, that's basically it. Um, we can check it real quick if you'd like. I'm gonna just kind of sketch a super quick graph over here. We have five, negative four, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So somewhere right here, okay. And then six positive six and positive five. So six, one, two, three, four, five. So somewhere about right there. And we have a line segment that looks kind of like this. They're saying that this is about nine. So I know that from here to here, um, it's one, two, three, it's five. And it's, you know, it's it's pretty close. I would say it's pretty close. It's slanted, so it's not gonna be exact. I would say this is a pretty good estimate of what it is, okay? All right, that's it. That's how you do the distance formula. Plug them in, subtract, square, add, square root. Okay, let's look at the last example. We have the midpoint formula in the complex plane. And just like the one we've seen before, it's very similar. Um, where we kind of let A, S, B, and T be representative of our numbers, and we add them, divide by two, and that's the midpoint. It's just the average. So the midpoint of the line segment during the points A, B, and S, T in the complex plane is the average of the reals and the average of the imaginary. So let's jump right into an example, just like the one before. Find the midpoint of the line segment joining the points corresponding to 2 plus i and 5 minus 5i in the complex plane. So let's go ahead and do, um, so AB is going to correspond to, I'm just going to pick the first one, 2 plus i, and then ST is going to correspond to 5 minus 5i. And it doesn't matter if you do it backwards, it's, you're adding and dividing by 2, so it should not make a difference. So the midpoint, midpoint is going to be equal to a plus s, so a plus s, 2 plus uh, 5 divided by 2, and then b plus t according to what I have. So this is my b, this is my t, so I'm going to have 1 minus 5, and that's all over 2. Okay, so two plus five is equal to seven over two. One minus five is negative four divided by two. I can simplify this to, well, I'll do, I guess I can do a decimal, it's fine. Seven halves or 3.5, same thing. Um, negative four divided by two is negative two. So that means that this point right here is where these two lines um, kind of have the halfway point. And if you wanted to graph it again, I'm gonna do this kind of fast because we're just kind of, we're just kind of sketching it super. This is the answer right here, by the way. This is the answer. Um, but I would do, let me see, 2 plus i. So 1, 2, 1. So there's that first one, that 2 plus i. And then I have 5 minus 5i. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So somewhere over here-ish, this was my 2 plus i. And this one is the 5 minus 5i. And if we connect these right here, we're saying that the midpoint is about 3.5, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3.5. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close. There it is. So this one is going to be, if I wanted to write this in, you know, the complex, the complex number format, it would be 
3.5 minus 2i, since we're doing that over here. Or you can also do 7 over 2 minus 2i, if you want to keep the fractions, okay? But anyway, that is it, guys. Um, nice short video. If, again, if you have any questions, please just let me know.